you clicked on this video because you want to learn about the Great Barrier Reef. And I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to teach you something you didn't know about it. And I'm going to elaborate on it. So buckle up. We're about to get after it. Um, comment down below ideas for the next video. But in the meantime, let's learn about the Great Barrier Reef. First off, it's in Australia. It's the largest living structure in the world. 2,300 kilometers, over 9,000 species, and uh, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty eye-grabbing. It's pretty beautiful, as you see here. Um, but what, what's, what's a reef? What's a barrier reef? What's a coral reef? We'll get into that. But let's start off with our fun fact, as we always do. Fun fact, you can see the Great Barrier Reef from outer space. I would imagine that this is maybe not an actual image, but it's relative to what it actually looks like from space. So that's pretty extravagant. Look at that fluorescence. Beautiful. All right, getting into coral reefs. I'm just going to unload a ton of facts at you guys here, okay? So what is a coral reef? Massive structures made of limestone deposited by coral polyps. People call coral reefs the rainforest of the sea. It's probably due to its biodiversity. Um, they support about 25% of all known marine species. Um, coral reef is alleged to have started growing. Actually, specifically, the Great Barrier Reef is alleged to have started growing in the past 20,000 years. Corals could grow higher as the sea level rised. Okay, so we've had rising sea level. People attribute that to climate change. I'm not really sure why the sea level is rising. You can look at the Icelandic and Ice Age stuff leading up to that. Might be a different video. But anyways, sea level rises, newly submerged margins of the hills on the coastal coral basin plain allows for the coral reef to build up itself closer to the shore every time, but also built from depth throughout history. Okay, hopefully that's easy to follow. I want to elaborate things in a simple manner, all right? Um, but what kind of what kind of reef is the coral reef? What kind of reef is the barrier reef? Well, it's a barrier reef. You didn't know there was types of reefs, did you? Fringe reefs are the ones connected to the coast. You probably see these ones um, whenever you go to your local Dominican Republic cruise, something like that. Some nice smaller reefs over there, but the barrier reef is one on the outskirts of the island, separated by a body of water. And that's what we're talking about here today. And then atolls, obviously. Something to do with volcanoes and other shit like that. Circular. Figured I'd give you guys the shapes. Nothing crazy about that. Um, I've got a coloration slide here, but I want to talk about what makes the Great Barrier Reef itself special comparatively to an average coral reef. Okay, first off, largest coral reef system, spanning over 2,300 kilometers, as we said. Its biodiversity is the greatest of all reefs by a landslide. Thousands of marine species, including over 1,500 fish species and 400 coral species. Holy species. I'm saying that word, and it's getting weird every time I say it. Uh, the reef serves crucial ecosystem roles such as shoreline protection, habit pro provision, habitat provision, and supporting tourism. I guess that's an important role. I found that on the internet. I guess I should have fact-checked that a little bit better. But yeah, like I said, a ton of information, and I'm trying to get this out to you guys right now. But how does a coral reef get its color? You know, why is it any different coloration than anything in the sea? Well, there's a symbiotic relationship between coral and algae that builds up on the coral. They help each other survive. That's what symbiotic means. To improving, they help each other. Relationship, living things. Um organisms, biology, as you know, ecology, buzzwords, attention span. Don't make me make a video about attention span because I'm losing mine. But um, yeah, they have a symbiotic relationship and all these algae are so diversified, biodiversified, if you will, that they contribute to such different and unique coloration, giving the fluorescence that we see. But here's the issue. Coral bleaching. This is what you hear about, you know, people are saying the Great Barrier Reef and all these other reefs are dying. Tons of videos on it. I looked through a lot of them. I was really trying to figure out one thing, but there's just a ton of different things that happen. Hurricanes affect it, change in ocean temperature, runoff and pollution, exposure to sunlight, extreme low tides. Basically, the causing of coral bleaching is there's a zone of tolerance that the coral has for different external conditions. 
if the ocean temperature exceeds what it can tolerate, then the algae within that is set to a zone of tolerance will die off. It's not good because the algae is giving the coloration. And once a coral loses its algae, which is protective, they become vulnerable. And this is why people are concerned for the coral reefs because all of the dying off of all of the coral. It's alarming stuff. We don't want it to happen. So people say, what can we do? Well, measures are being taken. Never fear. There's people emulating seabeds, creating their own coral, basically like networks, netting. Um, people are taking initiative, okay? So in all of the things that people say are going wrong, there's pushback and the restoration processes are getting better and better. Might make a separate video on that. That'll be down the line, but I wanna get the general idea out to you. The thing that goes wrong most of the time is the coral bleaching. It's the byproduct of the things that are going wrong, actually. Hurricanes, um, runoff and pollution, obviously, you know, people, they have their soil, they use shitty soil, it's fake soil, and the runoff, algae blooms, but not favorable ones, ones that are combatant, there's also species that eat the coral. A lot of shit, you know, because it's such a special place and it's hard to preserve these special places. Um, but yeah, it's extravagant at that. Um, I think that's all I have there though. I just threw a ton of facts out. So hopefully you can follow. If not, go back, check them out. Let's go to the takeaways. We've got beauty in our nature. I touched on beauty previously. Beauty might just be the takeaway in a lot of videos. Life is beautiful. Nature is beautiful. I don't know much about the global warming stuff. I will educate and elaborate myself and you on global warming in the future. I'm a proponent of the course of natural things and stuff like that. I'm not justifying anything and I'm not getting political. But what I am saying is there's humans fighting back against the problems we've created for ourselves. So, you know, take care of the environment, recycle your trash, save the turtles, man. And uh, as you know, and as you can tell from this video, I am now educated on the Great Barrier Reef, coral reefs at that. It is a sick, sick, awesome thing that I would love to see one day. I hope I've inspired you to see it one day as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to take action. No more plastic straws. No more plastic water bottles. And we'll do a climate change video too. Take care of yourself. And check out my channel. There's good stuff going on on this channel. And there's going to be even better stuff coming soon. Comment down below. Video ideas going forward. Like, comment, subscribe. And until next time.